gentlemen, the first budget of Modi government 3.0 after the Lok Sabha elections has generated a lot of sound and fury, conversation, a lot of criticism and a lot of credit claiming tonight. Before we decode the Rajniti behind the budget, let's get you the five most talked about takeaways. The first big takeaway is the change in the tax structure under the new tax regime. At least uh, uh, four crore salaried individuals will now manage to save up to 17,500 rupees annually. The standard deduction has been increased by 50,000 uh, rupees to 75,000 rupees, while many are of the view that this is possibly not enough because they'll always mange more. There are others who say that the middle class will benefit with other steps announced by the government. The second takeaway in the budget presented by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman is the focus on job creation. The centre has blunted the opposition's unemployment plank by announcing three schemes under employment-linked uh, uh, roadmap that has been provided under this scheme. Uh, the professionals in entering the workforce for the first time will be given one month's salary. Uh, this money will be provided as a provident fund contribution and it will benefit almost uh, uh, 2 uh, crore uh, uh, young 2 crore 10 lakh youngsters the third takeaway is the internship opportunity that will be provided to 1 crore youth in 500 top firms over the next 5 years the fourth takeaway is the big bonanza for alliance partners both the TDP and the Janta Dal United, the states of Bihar and Andhra have got special focus in this budget with the centre allocating over 15,000 crores for developing Andhra's new capital at Amravati and 26,000 odd crore rupees for road projects in Bihar. Also in Bihar uh, will be bridges that will be built, uh, flood relief uh, projects uh, for 11,500 crore and a power project worth 21,000 crores. But the final, the fifth takeaway, massive allocations have also been made for pro-poor schemes. So all in all, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman in her 82-minute long speech unveiled a comprehensive financial plan that sets the tone for a new era of inclusive growth, job creation and empowerment of the poorest of the poor. Here are excerpts from her 82-minute long budget speech this morning in the Lok Sabha. The first timers is, I would think, one of the very, very innovative initiatives. So what we are doing there is to be able to provide first timers one whole month's salary as subsidy. And this will be put into their account as direct benefit transfer, but possibly uh, in tranches. And then the first timers will be put through that learning curve and this will help them to acquire skills so that they become fully productive. It was introduced during the UPA government and it was introduced in 2012. Two years had passed and since after that when we came in, we tried keeping as a good governance principle, government being a continuum, the tax continued. Today we have uh, announced that we will indeed remove it. While the government says this is a futuristic budget that is aimed at fulfilling the Viksit Bharat vision, the opposition is up in arms. They have come up with their own set of takeaways from the Kursi Bachao budget to Junjuna budget to Jumla budget to cut copy paste budget. There's one common thread in the Vipaksha's criticism. They say the government gave in to coalition compulsions. The special focus on Andhra Pradesh and Bihar is because Sarkar ko apni kursi bachani hai. While other states 
have been ignored and they're asking what about us why were we not taken care of on the sidelines the congress party is claiming credit for the internship scheme as a move uh, uh, that was presented in their manifesto and also the abolishment of the angel tax let's listen in uh, to all the criticism that's coming in uh, even though uh, already the opposition is uh, planning to hold protests tomorrow and boycott of the niti ayog uh, meeting uh, to be chaired by the prime minister it's opposition all the way तो बहुत निराशजनक बजट के अपना सिंहासन बचाने के लिए ये बजट किया गया है दे हैव आल्सो टेकन सम एलिमेंट्स फ्रॉम फ्रॉम आवर मैनिफेस्टो पर्टिकुलरली द अप्रेंटिस स्कीम दिस बजट इज टोटली डायरेक्शन बेस्ड आई डोंट सी एनी लाइट इट इज अ डार्क डार्क एंड डार्क अब मान लीजिए सरकार बचानी है तो अच्छी बात है कि बिहार को आंध्र प्रदेश को कुछ विशेष पैकेज या विशेष योजनाओं से जोड़ा गया है महाराष्ट्र नॉट इवन बिन मेंशन टुडे इन द बजट द बीजेपी कॉन्स्टेंटली इंसल्ट महाराष्ट्र एंड द बीजेपी हेट्स महाराष्ट्र एंड दैट इज वॉट वी हैव बीन सीन इन द पास्ट टेन इयर्स आंध्र और बिहार का नाम लेने से बिहार की हकीकत नहीं बदलेगी बिहार से सिर्फ वोट चाहिए बिहार को कुछ दीजिएगा नहीं India Inc on the other hand says it's a well-rounded budget they are giving a big thumbs up to the continuity and stability message that's come out and allies like the TDP and JDU who have all the reasons to smile today are thanking the government for recognizing the needs of their states hum iske liye lagatar bhukte rahe aur इन लोगों को भी हमने कहा तो एक बात हो रहा था विशेष राज्य का दर्जा पहले से खत्म हो गया है हम लोगों ने ही कह दिया कि विशेष राज्य का दर्जा दीजिए या विशेष अधिकार के लिए मदद दीजिए यहाँ के लिए जो जरूरत है बिहार के लिए आप उसी में उन लोगों ने कई चीजों का मदद करने का घोषणा कर दिया है दिस हैज अ वेरी फ्यूचरिस्टिक बजट इन द सेंस वी आर not just uh, uh, creating a foundation for the coming 6 8 6 to 8 months but also the coming 5 to 10 years and i would like to personally thank uh, the central government for putting a special focus on the development andhra pradesh also you have seen for the last 5 years under the leadership of uh, uh, jagan mohan reddy as chief minister in the state of andhra pradesh how the whole state has been destroyed the idea of a capital on amaravati has been destroyed So the legitimate question we are asking on the news are tonight is Jan Kalyan equal to Sarkar Pachao Andolan that's the question and that's the debate coming up on the other side You're watching the news hour at 9 debate number 1 on Times Now Super Prime Time Joining the debate tonight Rajiv Chandrasekhar former uh, MOS uh, in the Meti industry uh, Meti ministry also joining me this evening Milind Diora member of parliament Rajya Sabha from the Shiv Sena Shinde group also with me in the studios is Mr Dagumala Prasad Rao the member of parliament from Chittur uh, belonging to the Telugu Desam party uh, also with me Ram Pratap Singh national spokesperson of the Samajwadi party Sanjay Jha author suspended congress leader restored congress leader call him what you will my good friend uh, but also with me this evening and my first question goes to mb rajesh minister of the kerala uh, for uh, excise and lsgd thank you very much gentlemen for joining me on the budget day news hour and uh, mb rajesh what is it that you don't quite agree in this uh, budget with because the congress says this is a cut and paste job things have been taken out of their manifesto in which case they must have been good ideas which is why they were in the manifesto so today i think the opposition should be extremely happy because your alliance partners uh, of the congress party and the brilliant ideas have now been uh, implemented by finance minister so where's the problem why is the opposition up in arms i would oppose this budget on uh, on the on, on six grounds first of all this budget was presented in the context 
of harsh economic realities of high levels of unemployment, alarming levels of uh, economic inequalities, high food inflation and slowing down of private investment. This budget has completely failed to address these harsh economic realities. Number two, the approach of this budget is uh, extremely disappointing because it is contractionary. Instead, uh, Honorable Finance Minister should have adopted an expansionary approach in the context of slowing down of economy, in the context of uh, uh, high levels of unemployment, etc., to stimulate uh, our economic activity. But instead, she uh, uh, adopted an, a, a very re reactionary, a very uh, orthodox approach of contractionary uh, policies. Number three, uh, the drastic cuts in subsidies, drastic cut in uh, food subsidy, fertilizer subsidy, and a, a cut in uh, allocation to MG and RAGS, all these shows the insensitivity of this government. This budget has uh, failed to address the rural distress. Number four, uh, the budget has uh, uh, the, the budget in the pretext of uh, employment generation chosen to subsidize the corporate sector uh, through the, the scheme of uh, employment uh, incentive scheme. Uh, so the budget is uh, pro-corporate. And number five, the, this budget has uh, given a raw deal to the states. Uh, apart from two states, Andhra Pradesh and uh, Bihar, uh, because of political compulsions, they have given uh, special packages. But uh, states like Kerala and many other states have been completely neglected. The most shocking thing is that uh, allocation uh, for finance commission grants has been reduced uh, in, in this budget again. Over the last two years, the reduction in Finance Commission grants amounts to rupees 40,000 crores. This is shocking. The government talks about uh, cooperative federalism and the government mm -hmm. is acting in, uh, in exact opposite. So this uh, is why we are opposing the budget. Rajiv Chandrasekhar. Rajiv Chandrasekhar, they oppose the budget, which they would have done in any case, but uh, he's listed the five grounds on which it has been uh, opposed. Please respond. Uh, look, uh, Navika, the left have the same old playbook, like a stuck record. They've been saying this since 2014. Uh, India has, uh, uh, as they kept complaining, become the fastest growing economy in the world. Uh, you know, most of what uh, Mr. Rajesh says uh, describes the coalition government between 2004 and 2009, in which he, his party supported uh, the UPA and the Congress. Uh, how anybody today can call a budget which is spending 48 lakh crores contractionary? Uh, of course, I have not learned uh, uh, economics from Karl Marx, and so therefore, I will not get into issues like this rhetoric, like contractionary budget. This is a budget that is growing at 7%. This is the, India is the fastest growing GDP in the world. Uh, none of these facts seem to be relevant uh, to the uh, Marxists in Kerala. And, you know, I think I would agree with one of the points that M.B. Rajay said, which is that from his perspective in Kerala, there are no investments. There is really a problem of jobs. There is a real problem of economic growth in Kerala. And that is because for the last eight years, there has been a government that is essentially anti-investment, anti-job creation. And uh, it is natural today, and everybody knows this, that the Kerala government has gone to the Supreme Court and tried to get the government of India to bail them out from the mismanagement of their economy. But let's leave that to the side. The reality of this budget is the following. Navika, uh, this is a budget that is building on 10 years of very systematic transformation and modernization of the Indian economy. From the Fragile Five in 2014 to be built up now to an economy that is for the last four years the fastest growing economy in the world that has got 
all kinds of factories and investments and physical infrastructure being built all around the country, creating jobs, both in the formal and informal sector, at a record pace, record FDI. And in the face of all this, including the EPFO data, if the left and the, their Congress allies want to keep talking like a stuck record about unemployment, I think they should look to their local economies and look, look at what they're doing. I say with absolutely no fear of contradiction, this is a remarkable first step in Modi 3.0. It consolidates what we have done in the last 10 years, what Prime Minister Modi ji did in the last 10 years, and sets a direction for clearly the next five years of very systematic growth towards becoming the third largest economy in the world. In terms of this employment-linked incentive as being pro-corporates, the economic survey, look, this is our ideology. We believe that the private sector are the job creators. We believe startups are the job creators. It is only the Congress and the left allies who think that all the jobs should be created by the government. So therefore, this is clearly a very transparent, solid private-public partnership between the state, the government, and the private corporate sector it, with PLI, with ELI, to create investments and create jobs. This is our ideology. This is our focus. And it is working. It has been successful. People don't like it in the left. Too bad. Well, Sanjay Jha, you don't like it too bad, but you can't not like it when stuff is taken out of your own manifesto as stated by many congressmen. So if it is the abolition of the angel tax, then and that was your idea, then fact is that you brought it in and they've <laughs> removed it. Your idea, great idea, they've adopted it. What's the problem? And if... Uh, you know, the internship idea is your idea, great idea. They've adopted it. You're not in government. You're not likely to use it for the next five years. So good. People of India have got that. Where is the problem? Uh, Navika, good evening and a hello to all my fellow panelists. Uh, you know, before I start, uh, the simple statement that Rajiv should know, you know, he went on the usual hyperbole of India being the fastest growing economy. Uh, Rajiv, fact, over the last fact, five years... India's GDP growth average is 4.25%. Let's get real about that. 4.25% is the average growth over the last five years. No wonder India is facing a serious problem of unemployment. But Avika, let's address your question. Imitation is the best form of flattery. And I do believe that the Congress party needs to feel good today because the manifesto clearly said what it said. And the BGP has been inspired by it. My worry, and I think this is what your viewers should be looking at, does it take 10 years for the government to recognize how serious the problem has been? I mean, you have destroyed literally India's demographic dividend story. I mean, this is what we sold India to. And my previous assignments have done that. And, and today you have future generations at risk. I'm not even going to get into the fact that even exams can't be held by this government. What are we talking about? And I agree with Rajiv that jobs need to be created by the private sector. I absolutely agree with you. Here is a problem. Where is the private investment? Uh, your government, Rajiv, gave a bonanza to the corporate sector. We have no problem with that. Of 1,45,000 crore tax relief. Over the last five years, that aggregates to around 8,70,000 crores. And I'm not even compounding that. Can I ask you, where are the jobs? Where is the private investment? And the truth, Navika, is this, that the ease of doing business doesn't exist. You still have private capital, you know, sitting on unutilized capacity, so they're not going to invest. Demand has been low. Private consumption has been low. They need a market. And more importantly, I mean, the, the other elephant in the room that nobody talks about, will any private investor, and Rajiv has been in the game himself, ever invest with this big trinity of CBI, ED, and income tax hanging like a Demosthenes sword over the head? They won't. I mean, that is the real fundamental problem. Today, Rajiv, the reality, and I'm going to give numbers to you, that is the beauty of the budget day. No hyperbole, no rhetoric is needed. Today on FDI that you tom tom about, your percentage of the FDI as a percent of the GDP is lowest in the last 16 years. It's at 1.7 or 1.8%. So India has fundamental structural problems, Navika. And here is the truth. In terms of unemployment, if I go by the CMIE data, because nobody trusts the government data at all, it's at 9.2% unemployment as on July 2024. I'm giving you updated figures. 
India needs a minimum of 8 million jobs to be created month after month. Where are you going to do that from? So the bottom line is this, that we have a gigantic problem. It requires, other than just borrowing from the Congress's manifesto, a lot more of a concerted attempt at structural reforms. This budget is a zero on reforms. It makes no attempt to really make anybody oh, in industry okay, believe okay. that they are looking at manufacturing, making India become a story. Make in India, manufacturing Sanjay is a component ja? of GDP today. Sanjay Ja, you want, you want to beat uh, Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman and present an 83-minute uh, reaction to the 82-minute budget? Be my guest, but... Uh, I wrote I... her an open letter. I wrote her an open letter. Uh, uh, that. Only one? I thought a couple of them. But uh, how much of that appeared uh, in the budget, I don't know. Uh, at least one idea of mine did appear, maybe three years later, but never mind that. But uh, uh, can I get Rajiv to, uh, you know, rebut uh, Sanjay Jha before I get you in, Milin Diora, because I know you're standing by, but these are questions to the government. So I let uh, Rajiv uh, uh, respond to that before I get you in. I, 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 I have to respond with some amusement at this uh, celebration by the Congress that some of their ideas have been picked. Look, the angel tax idea that found its way into the Congress manifesto is a problem that they created during the UPA. And for the last three years, this has been an intensely debated issue amongst the startups, amongst government ministries the Métis ministry, uh, and there has been obviously this issue of money laundering that was being uh, looked at by the income tax department. So while uh, Sanjay can celebrate that this is a great uh, Newtonian idea that he, he gave to the country, this is really an old idea, and uh, it, this just happened to be the right time for the angel tax to be withdrawn. So sorry about that. On the issue of internship and apprenticeship, uh, again, there is this celebration in the Congress as if there is some great uh, revelation. Apprenticeship is a, is a concept in India that has been going on for many, many years. NAPS and NATS are two programs that the Skill Ministry and the Education Ministry have run for the last five, seven years. We have modernized it. And what this budget does, it creates a la lot more focused effort at directing apprenticeship and aligning apprenticeship with 500 of the top corporates in the country. So uh, sorry about uh, they're taking some of that celebration away, but uh, none of this really deserves to be celebrated. But to going back to this issue of playing fast and furious with one piece of number and trying to build a whole narrative around that, the Congress is, uh, is a master at it. Uh, FDI is a percentage of GDP, is the lowest ever. Obviously, if you compare it to the 10 years in the UPA when there was GDP contraction and nine quarters of industrial production decline, everything will look big as a comparison of a declining contracting economy. Okay. So uh, I don't want to get into a tutu meme with the Congress, Navika, but here is the fact. There is no law of averages when you look at the fastest growing economy. This year, we are going to grow at 7%. We are going to be the fastest growing economy in the world, full stop. We were the fastest growing economy for the last three years, full stop. Sanjay can pull out all his calculators and do all of the averages from Nehru to Lal Bahadur Shastri to Indira Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi. But he'll still find that the reality is that we are the fastest growing economy in the world today. That is the reality. That is the truth. And any way you spin it, you can't duck and weave around that uh, basic fact. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Uh box of band-aid coming your way San, uh, Sanjay Jha but uh, okay. uh, Milind Diora Milind Diora uh, do you think this bit about cut copy paste kursi bachao budget has gone beyond uh, uh, what it uh, was uh, required to because uh, the fact that they are coalition partners is a reality so if there is an Andhra package or if there is a Bihar package uh, why are they suddenly so shocked about the propriety of it? Because it's happened all along, all the time, in the UPA years as well. Why is the opposition uh, literally behaving as if, oh, this is the first time we've seen something and it's so shocking? Uh, why? Yeah, firstly, thank you for having me, Navika. Both Rajiv and Sanjay are good friends of mine. And uh, Rajiv until recently sat on a chair in the Ministry of IT and... Uh, a chair you, you've sat IT on and, uh, in the past. Which I also sat on, and I'll come to a point about that. It's an interesting point. 
But talking about addressing the politics first, look, if the opposition has given constructive suggestions and for the frankly, for the first time in 10 years, and the government has adopted those suggestions, I think it's a good thing. That's a part of healthy democracy. Number one. Number two, the Congress party until recently was saying Andhra should get a special package. Now, when the government announces a special package, the opposition is unhappy. Now, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. I remember in UPA in 2012, when Mamta Banerjee at the time, TMC was an integral constituent of um, the UPA in 2012. And at that time, I think Pranam Mukherjee, if I'm not mistaken, was the finance minister of India. And he announced a huge debt relief package for the state of West Bengal at the time. The opposition, including the communists, said that this is favoritism. This is weakening our federal structure. I remember in 2000, going back even further back in 2004, in UPA's first government, when Congress got 145 seats and 65 MPs supporting the government from outside were communist MPs from Kerala and West Bengal. Budget after budget, there were special packages announced for West Bengal and Kerala. So this is part of, does politics play a role in budget making? No. Yes, it does. That's the reality of the situation. But I think Andhra has a different situation altogether. Andhra is a new state. Amravati, unfortunately, to become the capital of Andhra Pradesh was deprived for a long time. It requires some special funds, regardless of whether Mr. Naidu was a part of this government or not. Bihar, again, is a very different state. It has a different set of problems as compared to other parts of this country and deserves special attention. I think regardless of whether Mr. Nitish Kumar was supporting this government or not, it deserves special attention. Now, moving away from the politics, the reason I brought Rajiv Chandrasekhar and my chair, his former chair and my former chair into, into focus, you know, there are few things, there is a lot to be done. There is certainly an issue of how do we address inequalities of income as India is growing, as we are becoming the fastest growing economy in the world. We are the fastest growing economy in the world. As we are rising to become the third largest economy in the world, inequalities of income is an issue we need to address. But let's keep in mind few successes also in this budget. For one, in the last few years, the number of women in the workforce has increased from 23% to 37%. That should be celebrated. We should increase the number of women in our workforce because it, compared to countries like Vietnam, we are still very, very low. I remember in 2014 when Narendra Modi ji became the Prime Minister of India, there was a humongous NPA banking crisis. Today, mind you, with the reforms like IBC, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, 3.3 lakh crore rupees of money has been returned to creditors, which is why in the last few days you saw every state bank, every government of India owned bank giving dividends to the finance ministry. Now coming to the chair of Rajiv and my former chair, when I was a minister of telecommunications and IT, at that time, India's growing import bill, more than its oil bill, was its electronics imports. We were a net importer of electronics. I credit this government, I credit the public, the, the production linked incentives that they've used to achieve this success. Rajiv, his ministry has done a commendable job. Today, in the front page of every newspaper, Apple, which makes the iPhone, 14% of Apple's global phones are now manufactured in India. What is the worth? That's $14 billion of worth. That's created what? thousands of jobs. And India, as a, um, uh, uh, India's electronics uh, uh, exports to the U.S., grew from a $6 billion deficit today to a $9 billion surplus. Absolutely. So and the man, a net importer and the man who a did that importer. is joining us on the show tonight. And uh, may I request the indulgence of this panel uh, to uh, just stay on with me. Back to my panel and uh, Mr. Ram Pratap Singh, just look at this government. The feedback is already there. He didn't give away much, but he said, I'll convey your message to the finance minister. And that just shows that uh, it's a alive thinking, uh, uh, listening government. It's done what it is done. And uh, this is the third uh, time that they are in power. Can you hold that against them uh, when you bring up your opposition? Uh, thank you, Navika. Uh, what Mr. Vaishnav just said for opposition to provide a substantive way forward. Let me take this opportunity to give them a substantive way forward and play the role of a uh, constructive opposition person. Uh, I'm very happy today that at least this government realizes what is the malaise, what is the disease, and everybody is talking about unemployment. But instead of treating the disease, unfortunately, they are looking at treating the symptoms. So 
the measures taken in this budget do not go towards uh, creating more jobs. They are uh, going by the assumption that the jobs, when they get created, uh, the, the uh, employees would be incentivized. Now, let me give you a substantive way forward by giving you a short example. In the Indian economy, historically, 50% of the GDP comes from the organized sector. 50% comes from the unorganized sector, which is agriculture and MSME. The problem in the Indian economy is that post-GST, post-demonetization, the MSME se sector, which creates 94% of the jobs, has been suffering. Agriculture growth rate is restricted to 1.4%. So the GDP is growing up because of the organized sector and the jobs that should be created are not getting created because the MSME sector is the major sector. Now, the, the, the way forward is to look at how to energize the MSME sector in the country and the, we would have solved the problems of the jobs, not the second point. He also said that you have to figure out, what, is there anything wrong on the policy front in this budget? Yes, I would like to point out just one thing. Globally, and economists think about fiscal deficit, and in this case, it is slightly more than 3.5%. But what is our social spending in this budget, or what I call social spending is actually political spending. Prime Minister Garib Kisan Yojana, Prime Minister Garib Kalyan Yojana, that is 10% of our budget. Now, that is completely unproductive spending because it just, these are doles being given out and the money being exhausted. If that same amount of money is invested into rural infrastructure, into agricultural in infrastructure, into MSME infrastructure, I think we could go a long way forward. And well said, and I completely agree with you, Ram Pratap Singh. But uh, would you want to give that advice to the Congress party, which is uh, in your alliance, rather than give it to the BJP first? Uh, Milind Deora, uh, you know, are they advising the wrong party first? Uh, you know, shouldn't they advise the, the Congress the party first? So I would like to give them the advice as an opposition member. But then, obviously, then it's not an ideological alliance that you have, because... Uh, your fundamentals seem to be right, but their fundamentals seem to be by the votes. Uh, khata cut, khata cut, uh, variety. Milind Deora. Yeah, Navika, let me try to elevate the discussion beyond politics and this to through <laughs> politics. Look, um, India has had a unique position today. Uh, the, the fact is that every industry, every investor, every large business is adopting what's called the China plus one strategy. They are moving investments to countries like India. They're looking at countries like Vietnam. Some, com some companies, by the way, Naveka are adopting what's called an EBC strategy. Anywhere but China. People don't want to invest in China. They don't want to make any greenfield investments in China. India has great tailwinds. We should take advantage of those tailwinds. I believe that the government has utilized in its statement in the budget how it plays out, how it gets implemented in the years to come and the days to come is something we will all have to be vigilant about. But I think their statement, their intent is correct to use government incentives, to use infrastructure spend. Today, for instance, 3.5% of GDP towards infrastructure. That's how you create jobs. You create ancillary industries. That's how you create jobs on a massive scale. Rajiv Chandrasekhar's point is right. Sanjay also agreed to that point. You can't expect state PSUs now to provide jobs to the people of India. People who come to my office today from Mumbai and from Maharashtra seeking jobs, they all want jobs in the private sector. They don't want to work in a BSNL or in Shipping Corporation of India. They're coming to seek jobs in the private sector. How do you increase that? The, the, how do you increase jobs? And you use these incentives. You use your infrastructure spend. You use your production linked incentives to do three things. Create jobs, which it's been doing for the last few years. Rework your supply chains to reduce your dependence on China. I would say one additional element, which the finance minister did talk about, which is extremely critical for our country, it's, it's strategically important, is to use those incentives to also green our economy. Today, I'll give you one small statistic. A country like Sweden started greening their economy 30 years ago. In three decades, they've reduced carbon emissions by 80%. People thought you've reduced carbon emissions by 80%, it's going to lead to joblessness, unemployment. They've grown their economy twofold, increased green jobs. America did the same thing. America today, this number of green jobs as compared to jobs in the fossil fuel industry are, I think, 4x. So greening our economy is also another element that can be used and added to the PLI incentives. Where, well, while you're creating, you're, you're solving the unemployment problem, you're solving the reduction, you're, you're reducing your dependency on Chinese supply chains. You can also utilize that to green the economy. For instance, in the IT sector now, there is an artificial intelligence boom. There is a GPU boom. 
using the 10,000 crores allocated to the India AI mission, using it to say that only Indian data centers will be used, only green data centers will be used. Let's not forget, today data centers world over consume 5% of the world's electricity. <coughs> So all these are things we have to think of. These are all of strategic importance. Absolutely. Out of the box uh, thinking uh, is, is the way to go forward. Sanjay, I'm coming to you, but let me get in Mr. Yeah. Prasad Rao, uh, Member of Parliament in the Lok Sabha from the TDP. And Mr. Prasad Rao, the question here is, the intent is there. The states have been looked after, and that is the political reality of today. Budgets are not made uh, uh, in thin air. They are made in the real world uh, where politics... Uh, uh, first, economics uh, happens second. It's only when governments are formed that uh, budgets are presented. So why is the opposition grudging both uh, Bihar as well as Andhra Pradesh what they've got in this budget? Yeah, good evening everyone. See, everybody says there is a special treatment for Bihar and Andhra Pradesh, which is not correct. See, Andhra Pradesh, whatever is allotted is as per the commitment given in the State's Reorganization Act. So, from that day onwards, whatever is coming, as if they are implementing the commitments in the Act. So, leaving that aside, and everybody says special treatment, special treatment, what this is as per the Act only. And then, any road development and all that, it is a natural central schemes that any, every state gets in this country. Likewise, AP also got. So, nothing to think about that special treatment just because we are in NDA. So, that is one thing. And coming to the budget, I think I view this as a, one of the best uh, budgets that have been presented by anybody or by all means from Honorable FM also. See, they are concentrating on the major uh, pillars of this society that is poor, farmer, youth, and women. So every time, I mean, these things are we we are used to. I mean, question of why this is not concentrated. Now we are uh, concentrating on. Well, that. exactly. That's mm. what that's what the economy needs. That's what is being done. But Sanjay Jha is not happy. You won't be happy till you are in government, Sanjay Jha. So first, first come to terms with that. Uh, yeah. And then next five years, uh, a lot of stuff from your manifesto may get taken away because you don't have an opportunity to implement it anyway. Why are you so worried? Well, Navika, Navika let, let's bite the bullet here. The political reality is that this government has responded because it is now in uh, actually facing a fractured mandate. It's running a coalition government. This is the reality and the humbling and the fact that there are now three critical assembly elections coming up in October, where probably the BJP is seeing the writing on the wall, has created panic. Because I can't imagine them going to Maharashtra, a state where I live in, Melind lives here as well, where there is serious challenges. So I think this is, let's be, let's be honest about it, is driven by political expediency, point number one. Point number two, can anybody anybody deny? And I agree with Melinda on multiple issues that he's raised. But the truth is that if after 10 years, after all the make in India hype, the component of manufacturing in India's GDP is coming down instead of going up, it tells you, Navika, that we have actually gone through a phase of deindustrialization. Given the potential, we have not been able to leverage it at all, which is why the China plus one hasn't given the dividends that India should have Well, then, Sanjay Jha, have you and forgotten that, is, that there was a pandemic that has no, impacted the whole no, world uh, and no, India no, has no, been no, part no. of that world? But Rajiv Chandrasekhar, manufacturing law, FDI law, uh, deindustrialization, all kinds of charges, almost as if we were industry was growing at the rate of 10% per annum uh, when the UPS Sarkar was there. But please respond to Sanjay. No, no, I, no I, there's not much to respond to Sanjay. I, you know, he keeps using the word hyperbole, uh, and I think he's got the post-doctorate in hyperbole. I think he, like I said, fast and furious with data, half bits of data. 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 Uh, India is the fourth fastest growing manufacturing economy in the world. If Sanjay Jha hasn't got that office memo or the email, I'm sorry, but uh, certainly his uh, view or his uh, worldview isn't describing where India is today in terms of manufacturing. 
Uh, we are the second largest manufacturer of mobile phones. We are fast growing uh, as a powerhouse in electronics. So anyway, I don't want to get into a tutu meme with him uh, and uh, certainly not waste my time on that. But I certainly want to respond to Mr. Singh of the Samajwadi Party. And I think uh, he uh, graciously, uh, uh, I think, put forth a point uh, as a suggestion. And I certainly want to clarify. I think he is not operating with the full facts. The he He's right. The MSMEs are the heart and soul of the Indian manufacturing ecosystem. Uh, I would like to point out to him that in the last decade, in 2004 to 2014, due to the FTAs and the absolutely uh, unrestricted import, MSMEs and the entire manufacturing sector were laid to waste. There, were, there was a havoc. And what is happening now in the last 10 years is systematically that manufacturing ecosystem is being built back. The credit guarantee scheme that was announced for MSMEs during the COVID that saved and protected so many of our small and micro enterprises. And today, the Honorable Finance Minister has talked about the credit guarantee scheme being expanded for MSMEs, where the government and a trust of the government backstops the loans for MSMEs is at the core of allowing credit to flow more and more to the MSMEs and to grow the MSME ecosystem. He is right on one part that the MSMEs are core to our vision for Vixit Bharat, but he obviously misses the point that the, the havoc that was caused to the MSMEs was a result of those 10 years of absolutely uh, unstopped uh, uh, in imports. So I think manufacturing, if the point, uh, Navika, is whether this is a manufacturing-friendly budget, it is 100, 1,000% continuing the momentum and the growth of the manufacturing ecosystem that we have seen the last five to seven years uh, that India has built out. Milan alluded to that, whether it is Apple, whether it's Samsung, whether it's Cisco, there is no global manufacturing tech brand today that is not manufacturing in India. There is not one. All of them are manufacturing in India. And the pivot today for our manufacturing economy is that we are moving from That's an that. import substitution manufacturing industry to an export-led manufacturing industry. And that is why the uh, finance minister has announced a large number of customs duty rationalization to make more and more competitive those who manufacture in India, not just for the local market, but also for global markets. Well, that's uh, what it is. The budget is there. Uh, it's uh, more uh, in terms of continuity, projection of growth, looking at ground realities. Yes, Sanjay Jha, Maharashtra elections are a reality that are facing you as they are facing uh, uh, the NDA alliance partners. And uh, certainly people will look at that and be aware that they need to face those elections. And if the employment piece is being addressed in time for that, uh, who, can, who can quibble about it? But the fact of the matter is it's all here. This is a government that has rolled out, that has given some sops to the middle class and that is listening to the feedback that's coming through social media on the middle class, which is not reacting very well uh, to the long-term capital gains uh, tax and the removal of indexing, uh, which clearly pinches their pocket. It's a government that will have to respond. Will it do so sooner than later? We'll wait and watch. Uh, but thank you very much, gentlemen, for this very engaging debate on the budget because this is not the end of, uh, you know, the growth story of India. It is the beginning, step one in Modi 3.0. How many miles will we go before we sleep? Well, that's work in progress. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen.